Welcome back everyone to the channel and to our new in-depth series here on O in the Sea where we get in-depth. We're going to jump into a few breakdowns of all the players, high, low, up, down, left, and right on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster. And today's episode of In-Depth is going to be about one Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette is a man with an interesting story. His career trajectory has actually taken him through multiple cities in the state of Florida. Leonard Fournette was a running back originally out of LSU, of course, drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars with the fourth overall pick in the 2017 draft. He wasn't just a regular old prospect. He was pretty much considered to be a slam dunk, home run, can't miss running back prodigy. In fact, quick story, I'm not one who generally pays a lot of attention to college football until it gets close to draft time, scouting combine, senior bowl, all that stuff. Um, so when there's a really good college player coming out, I never really hear about them unless the guy is super duper hyped, like Trevor Lawrence, Andrew Luck, Johnny Football, and Leonard Fournette, actually. One day, just playing football, and this guy, Matt, comes up to me, and he starts talking to me, and he goes, man, did you see Leonard Fournette last night? And I go, no, of course not. At this point, I had no idea who Leonard Fournette was, never heard the name, did not know who the man was. He starts telling me all over and over. He's going on and on about how Leonard Fournette is going to be the next greatest thing. Nobody can stop him. His highlights are unbelievable. He's the next Adrian Peterson and all this and all that. And now, I'm a huge Adrian Peterson fan. My mom was a Vikings fan growing up, so I'm always rooting in part for the Vikings. And Adrian Peterson, to me, I mean, he's the best running back that I have ever witnessed playing football so this guy Matt coming up to me singing the praises of Fournette and at this point a guy that I've never heard of so I'm just telling him like yeah yeah you know we'll see we'll see about that uh, Adrian Peterson's pretty good Leonard Fournette obviously after this conversation I had with Matt gets drafted to the Jaguars and again that was with the fourth pick in the first round so he was drafted ahead of guys like Christian McCaffrey Jamal Adams Deshaun Watson Patrick Mahomes uh, wow he hit the league, and instantly the Jaguars became more credible than they had ever become like the entire time that I was ever interested in football. Leonard Fournette and a stout defense, they carried Blake Bortles and that Jaguars attack all the way to the AFC Championship game, but unfortunately, that was a game that the Jaguars are going to have to play in Foxborough, Massachusetts, prior to 2020, which could only mean one thing. Goat man, goat man, goat man. Tom Brady is in the house. And Tom Brady did what he always does. And despite stitches in the thumb of his throwing hand, he beat the Jaguars and, of course, advanced to the Super Bowl. The Jaguars, after this, they had that great season. And then, of course, they just fell off the face of the earth. They slipped into turmoil, whole lot of issues with the front office and all of that stuff. We won't jump into that. But essentially, Leonard Fournette and the team stunk after that. Uh, 2019, however, would operate as a real nice bounce-back year for playoff Lenny. He again eclipsed 1,000 yards, which was super-duper. He had over 70 catches, which is a stat that I don't think anybody really understands. I, I, I'm going to say it a little quietly because I think it's a very common misconception out there about Leonard Fournette that he's this type of running back who is incapable of catching the ball or cannot be a consistent third down back for a team, which is just simply incorrect information that a lot of people are operating with. Leonard Fournette had over 1,600 total yards in 2019. However, 1,600 wasn't enough. He was cut by the Jacksonville Jaguars right before the start of the 2020 season. At this point, Leonard Fournette had hit a crazy low. He went from being the fourth pick in the draft and the next GOAT running back to the AFC Championship game to, wait a minute, is this guy a bust? I know when the Jags cut him, they couldn't even find a trading partner for him. A lot of people were contemplating whether or not Leonard Fournette was just a complete and total bust, um, which is pretty crazy considering he had 70 catches over 1,000 yards rushing just a year prior. I even had friends who I consider to be knowledgeable football fans, knowledgeable, intelligent, you know, NFL fans, who thought when the Buccaneers signed Leonard Fournette that he wouldn't make any difference for them this year and that he was washed. And personally, when the Buccaneers signed him, I was ecstatic. 
Uh, the second he was cut, I was telling everybody that I talk football with, hey, we got to get this guy. Buck's got to move on this. It makes, like, way too much sense not to. I'm like, he would be the perfect one-two punch to go with Rojo. They complement each other's style so well. He also solidifies the position for us, which at the time we didn't know exactly how good Ronald Jones was going to be, so it felt like it needed some solidification. And then on top of that, I was like, he's already in Florida, guys. He's literally in the state that we're in. So it's not too big a deal for him to just shift over from the top right to the middle left. Like, this is no biggie, Leonard. Just hop on over, and we'll get you on the boat, and we'll get you rolling. No preseason and a limited role in our Week 1 loss to the Saints. Left Week 2 against the Panthers in Ray J as our first actual introduction to Leonard Fournette. Boy, it was nice to meet him. 12 carries, over 100 yards, 2 touchdowns including one of the sweetest runs of the season when Leonard Fournette ripped off a 46-yard touchdown run, which put the dagger in the Carolina Panthers and gave the Buccaneers their first win of the season. And I remember the announcer on that play just yelling, what a gut punch from Tampa Bay. And that got me really hyped. That was exciting Um, because it really was a gut punch. It was a cool way to end the game. Thank you, uh, Leonard. And that was all we really heard about Leonard Fournette for a while. Quite a few games went by consecutively where Leonard Fournette, he really wasn't involved in the offense, didn't really put up any impressive numbers, didn't find his way back into the end zone until a full two months later against the Rams, which despite finding the end zone, did not produce a banner day across the stat sheet. And the tale of Leonard Fournette doesn't really boast any explosive stats in any one singular week until the playoffs. Hence, the name Playoff Lenny. In our first game against the Atlanta Falcons, which featured a 17-point Tom Brady comeback, Leonard Fournette did have 50 yards and two touchdowns, which was actually one of his better days of the season. And that helped the Tampa Bay Buccaneers finish off the regular season undefeated. But let that sink in. That was one of his better days of the season, guys. 50 yards and two touchdowns. Now, two touchdowns is great. Love it. Boom. And if you remember the game, it's not like he got a ton of touches, and I would assume if he got more, he'd have done better in the yards department. However, 50 yards is not a lot of yards, and let's not pretend like it is. 50 yards and two touchdowns, by far one of his best days on the entire season. The Buccaneers finished the regular season 11-5, and and thus, we're in the playoffs, where the story of playoff Lenny would be born. However, it may be all thanks to coincidence. Ronald Jones, who was the starting running back and receiving way more playing time and reps than Leonard, suddenly had a streak of some of the worst luck that I have ever seen. Starting a few weeks before the Buccaneers playoff game at Washington, he originally needed to get surgery to get a pin put in his pinky. Now, there was some speculation he would miss time for the pinky, and then there were other people saying, well, he'd be able to play through the pinky, so no big deal. Regardless, none of that would ever matter. It wouldn't come to fruition either way because... Ronald Jones would be the first Buccaneer, or I should say major Buccaneer, key piece of the Buccaneers roster to get hit with an illness list designation right after he got the pin put in his pinky. So, obviously, he was not going to be eligible to play some games for the Bucks. The run of bad luck for Ronald Jones would also entail an an oddly timed pregame warm-ups quad injury, which would all culminate with Ronald Jones missing what was his first career playoff game. And this was the moment that playoff Lenny was born. Leonard Fournette, even when Ronald Jones returned, became the bell cow back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers throughout their playoff run. And when on such a tear, many fans, myself included, would have to question if the Buccaneers would even have had as much playoff success as they had without Leonard Fournette's contribution. In a four-game postseason, playoff Lenny, had four touchdowns and over 400 total yards. A hot streak that soared in its apex in a Super Bowl performance that could have warranted some MVP consideration had Tom Brady not have been, you know, Tom Brady and on the Bucs. That is the story of Leonard Fournette, and it takes us to now, where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have to make a decision on the value of Leonard Fournette going forward and whether or not they should attempt to resign him. A lot of the videos so far has been a recapping of facts, and now we arrive at a portion that's more opinion-based. Before we get into it, I would love to hear your guys' opinion on what you think the Buccaneers should do with Leonard Fournette this offseason. So comment down below. Let me know. I really do want to see what you guys have to say. For me, the Leonard Fournette issue may have already resolved itself. For those of you who haven't heard the report, Leonard Fournette, although he would be open 
to return to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He is questing to go to a team where he has the opportunity to seize a majority of the reps. Essentially, Leonard Fournette wants to be in an offense that is about Leonard Fournette. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense will never be about Leonard Fournette. It was partially or fairly significantly about Leonard Fournette in the playoffs. However, the Bucs are not going to go back to that, and they are not going to maintain every single game giving the ball to Leonard Fournette as much as they did throughout the playoffs. It's unrealistic. The Buccaneers have too many other talented players and too many other weapons that require touches for Leonard Fournette to be the focal point of the scheme. I believe the Buccaneers, unfortunately, are likely to lose Leonard Fournette in free agency. It's unfortunate, Bucs fans. I know it sucks, but it's not the end of the world. Recency bias is a real thing, and I think it's going to be operating at full power this offseason in a lot of ways, but especially when we talk about Leonard Fournette. His incredible playoff run may lead a lot of people to forget about, quite frankly, how forgettable his regular season was. He had a few nice moments here and there sprinkled in. However, mostly all of the memories I will have from Leonard Fournette's entire time with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will come from the playoffs. In my Super Bowl Victory Monday, I talked about the potential of losing Leonard Fournette this offseason, and one of the things I mentioned was he's probably going to get paid more by another team, and he deserves that opportunity to start and star for a team and get reps. If Leonard Fournette comes back to Tampa, he's going to have to have another season where he's in the backfield by committee system with Ronald Jones, and I don't think that Leonard Fournette wants to do that. I think he's a better player, or at least he himself feels that he's a better player than that. And based off of his play in the playoffs last year, he's earned the right to go out and try to prove that and try to just be a one-man backfield, be a star for a football team, especially if somebody's willing to give him that opportunity. Now, of course, since that video, all the reports have surfaced that he wants to go to a team where he'll be able to get a bulk of the carries. Now, the theme of this video is basically right here. This is totally understandable, guys. And I encourage everybody to just really think about where Leonard Fournette was a couple months ago and where our expectations of Leonard Fournette were a couple months ago. Because I think that a lot of things changed just with the last couple games and the streak of, uh, I don't want to say the streak, but the run, pun intended, that he went on. The entire reason that Leonard Fournette came to the Bucks back in early September on a cheap deal, down to do the backfield by committee system with Ronald Jones, was to prove Jacksonville was wrong for cutting him and simultaneously get the attention of another NFL team by balling out on a good team during a deep playoff run. That was the plan. He would be a part of a deep playoff run or at least down the stretch have a couple big games for the Bucks, and people would see that, realize, wow, this guy's not washed. Let's give him an opportunity. So, newsflash, now we're living in 2021 and Leonard Fournette literally did exactly that. It went perfectly for Leonard Fournette. If you're Leonard Fournette, this could not have gone any better for you. You didn't really take a lot of wear and tear on your body in the regular season. You didn't really do a lot. You didn't have to do a lot. It's all good. The team got to the playoffs, and once the playoffs started, you stepped in, became an absolute star, and kind of put the team on your back, and everybody saw you carry the team. Couldn't have gone any better for Leonard Fournette's reputation and the, and the national perception of him has completely flipped. So Leonard Fournette could not have executed his plan any better. Um, so to me, he proved his point. He could still play, and even though I'd love to have him back, I do think he will get an opportunity to play elsewhere, and I think he's going to take that opportunity because obviously the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, you have to look at it additionally from their perspective. In order to make Leonard Fournette happy, you're going to have to enter contract negotiations and find a number that makes him happy, first and foremost. Then, you're going to have to start Leonard Fournette for at least a large portion of next season's games. And in those starts, you're going to have to give him some touches. Now, I'm all for Leonard Fournette getting his touches. I mean, in a perfect world, this sounds like a good plan. But realistically, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are not going to do that because they have too much money that they're going to need to spend on other guys to keep the rest of the team together. And another reason that this is unlikely is because of Ronald Jones. Quite frankly, Ronald Jones is, is going to be given his own in-depth video in our series here on the channel so I don't want to do a deep dive into his performance here but Ronald showed a lot this past season for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and let's not forget if not for an odd stroke of horrendous luck maybe keeps playoff Lenny on the playoff sidelines 
Ronald Jones was our team's starter for the entire season and showed enough to earn the job outright going into next season. So there's no way that the Tampa Bay Bucks are going to choose an older and likely more expensive player over a guy they drafted and developed who has literally shown the ability to get better in each year that he's been in the league. So with that being said, to Leonard Fournette I say, if this is the last time you're a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it was absolutely great. And honestly, I will always say that there is no way the Tampa Bay Buccaneers get through these playoffs without you. Uh, I'm always going to remember the run against Green Bay for a touchdown. That was ridiculous. What a highlight. Trucking through people in the Super Bowl. Just running over Kansas City Chiefs defenders with no remorse. I'm definitely always going to remember the touchdown run in the Super Bowl was really the moment for me. The touchdown run in the Super Bowl followed up by the Antoine Winfield Jr. pick. Those were on back-to-back drives, and and that sequence of events is is when it really sunk in for me watching the game. Like, holy cow, we are potentially, we're about to be Super Bowl champions. So, Leonard Fournette, I have you to thank for that, and I'm very appreciative for it. If you, you know, you do wind up leaving, you are leaving on the ultimate high note so you've got to respect that you are forever going to be a bucks legend for what you did in that small stint of time thank you playoff lenny super bowl lenny um and i will be rooting for you wherever you go as long as it's not the saints